Ooh. That was the movie trailer from America Recycled Hello. with the Hassan. Yes, I did it. You got it. Woo. I did it. The Hassan brothers, Tim and Noah, who happens to be here magically. So these two brothers come from Florida, and they decided to make their own little bikes and drive across the road, pedal, pedal. And the reason that they did this was to go and actually explore alternative communities. Did you set out to do that, or More is that or what less. you found? I mean, the uh, original concept was somewhat vague. I think we had a sense that there was this thriving you know, side of the United States that's very different from the way it's often presented in you know, the mainstream sense, your white picket fence, you're in the trailer, the guy, you, know, like you mortgage, you pay your taxes, you live the American dream, you the American get old, you retire, you die, right? Chain, and all in chain. that kind of took over the national mythology for you know, a couple generations, starting like what, in the 50s or so, but that's like, it's pretty short-lived compared to a lot of the deal, ideals that originally founded this country, which was much more about innovation and exploration and kind of mm -hmm. and people who came here because they wanted to come here, they were, it was not a safe, comfortable thing to do. They were going into the unknown. It was a challenge. Yeah, they were trying to build something completely new. So now we're soft. Now we're soft, but not all of us. Which, you know, we've highlighted some amazing, you know, people through this event that are definitely trying to do new things. Do you think, it's, is that a similar vein in, like, these, because a lot of these people I keep saying have, like, chosen to jump out of the matrix. They've chosen to not follow the American dream. They've chosen not to be part of this ideal. And the reasons behind it, though, do you think, in just seeing, like, what we've been doing here with deconstruction, do you feel like there's similar veins of thought? I do. Um, like, you were talking earlier about how this country was one of inventors and of innovators and of makers. And we were kind of talking about that in the context of, like, kind of physical stuff. But I feel like that's also true in a cultural sense. You know? Absolutely. People were coming here not only, I mean, to innovate life. Mm. Right? And, um, a new way. To deconstruct, yeah. And so now you do have this deconstructing of the American dream that's happening all over the country. And it's not new. I mean, we've seen this in different phases throughout our history. Like a huge, you know, in the 60s, there was a huge wave of counterculture that kind of, you know, rattled the bones of the, of the world, really. And it still is there in its own way. But, um, so yeah, I do see what we're exploring in the vein of what all of these teams are exploring. We are deconstructing America with this movie. One of, the, one of the things that has come up in um, several conversations in my last few days is the importance and character building of struggle and, and like what, what that does for, for a work ethic that, that can be really lost in, in the modern society of which you are speaking. Which there are as many callous... Well, and it's, there's something where you have to have a challenge. Mm -hmm. or something yeah. yeah but it's also like a self-disposal you or like you chose to step away and then and, and then it's hard yeah. and it kind of weeds out though it seems because like a lot of the communities that you went to definitely gone through their fair share of trials and tribulations and Absolutely. I mean, these people aren't um, choosing to live like this because it's the easy way out or something like that. In a lot of ways, you know, it's easier. It would be easier for them just to keep doing the thing that everyone tells just them they should do be the doing. Just do the milk and cookies you know? and believe in the Jesus and but follow the But they life. just couldn't do it. I mean, some right. of them were raised with alternative values because they're questions their parents ask and such, but a lot sure. of them were not, you know? A lot of them were kind of just like fish out of water. They never felt like they had a place and they just needed to do something different in order to just be themselves, in order to be happy. And I have an inkling that, I mean, these are some extremes these people were looking at are, you know, such the type of person that they do radical things. But I think everybody feels trapped in some way by, you know, the overbearing culture around them. So, sure. you know, we're kind of hoping by presenting these examples that um, everybody can kind of get a little inspiration from that. And even if it's little things in their life, you know, see, you know, where they're holding themselves back and what they, how they can actually make changes in their own lives to live the way they actually want to be living. Was, was this heavily food themed? It seemed like there was a lot of context to cuisine. Yeah, that's, there's a lot of food in it. I don't think that was intentional. Um, I mean, food is such a big part of life, and it's such a, you know, 
foundational life system that if you're going to be, you know, reinventing your life, food is obviously going to be approached differently. Yeah. And that's something very differently we explored. I mean, we, you know, we see dumpster diving, we see road reclamation, we see farming, we see even, I mean, that's all the production and the, you know, gathering and consumption of food, but the ritual around food as well. Like, there's also this sense of the community of food having often been lost and, you know, in a fast food nation and um, the way that people live now where, you know, it's fuel, they grab something, they stuff it in their mouth so they can keep working. Whereas food has always played way more central of a role to community building and, yeah. you know, to actually sit down, you know, with a group of friends, family, and eat something, Strangers. especially that you cook together, especially that you even grew together. I mean, right. that's a incredibly powerful... Well, um, and you guys lived with these communities. We did. You didn't just kind of go and blow by. You actually stayed for months and yes. weeks. It wasn't waiting. like a 200 communities, 200 days kind of thing. No, it yeah. was, I mean, we basically, I mean, we five... One, two, yeah. I mean, and we spent between one and a half months and like five months. I, I want to say we were trying to, like, we developed intimate relationships with them. We still keep in touch with, you know, almost all of them. Um, and we're friends, you know, at this point, yeah. And Noah, what was your greatest struggle with this process? It's really oh, intense. My greatest struggle in the process, I would say just like finding the drive to see it through. I mean, my brother and I, we had each other. I mean, we grew very close. I mean, we were already close, but this definitely solidified that. Like, we're brothers, we're best friends. He lives in Oakland as well. Um, and we had each other to support as well when it did get hard. I mean, we fought a lot. It was like, we fight like... What did you, know, you fight a lot about? I don't know. Stuff? Like, I like, you know, cooking on a bicycle, stuff. eating squirrel. Like, mostly the stupid <laughs> stuff. People, you know, you're with someone 24 hours a day. Did you ever, like, ride away in two different directions? Yeah. Like, That's yeah, yeah. it. <laughs> Wait, the camera. But, I mean, that said, we did. I mean, if I had been working with just someone that I wasn't so close to, that wouldn't have had the same security, sure. you know, because we know we're not going to just completely ditch each other. So, even if we would, like, get upset or disagree about something. There awesome. was. And is, is that dynamic also documented in this film? Yes, um, it is. Yes, <laughs> to a degree. Um, I don't think we were able to capture our own relationship as intimately as we were some of the other people, which is, it was kind of a learning process for us to like turn, sure. you know, look at ourselves like that. And, um, but we did, we did, there is a good amount of the film, which is actually um, going to be premiering this spring. Um, it's a good amount of it is about our bicycle trip and about you know our evolution as people and as brothers and kind of why we set out to do that and our own story as being a parallel to the stories of these communities that you know we are writing through basically. Oh. Beautiful. America recycled the <laughs> Hassan brothers. The Hassan brothers. The Hassan brothers. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's brothers. so painful. I want to say, it's H-U-S-S-I-N. That's like correct. Said. It's like a Hussein with no E. Hussein. Hussein. It's Belgian. It's Belgian. It is. Well, I'm old. Then. I think it was like Hussein before they came to the United ah, States. No, Hussein. <laughs> there's a good, like, kind of, there's a good country feel to it, though. Yeah. Well, we thank the country feel, and we thank you for riding across America for two years and actually filming it.